what's going on guys this is the mafia garage here and back at it with another video uh today i'm here reviewing my 1991 mr2 turbo uh this one's a sw20 so it's the second iteration of the mr2 for those of you that don't know mr2s uh that much uh, I've owned this car for two and a half years, and within those two and a half years, it's been very, very, very good to me. Uh, the only thing that has gone wrong with this car that... Didn't, this car, thankfully, knock on wood, it has not left me stranded. Uh, but it has, like, gave me a few hiccups. And what I mean by hiccups is... Um, uh, when I was boosting one time, it over-boosted... And then all power just cut off. And what I found out was the knock sensor blew on the car. And uh, so I didn't want to buy a factory knock sensor. I know it sounds like, oh, buy the factory knock sensor. But I saw on ATS's website. ATS is a uh, company that makes MR2 parts and other parts for other cars like the Lotuses and Ferraris. Um, he made a knock sensor. It's called a GM knock sensor. So it's off of like a Cor Corvette or whatever car they take it off of because they don't give you the part number. That They make like a pigtail that connects onto the knock sensor. I have a video of it on my channel. But uh, that was my replacement and it's much stronger. And people say don't run that. You know, it'll risk you blowing like something else. But I mean, it's been good to me so far, and I haven't been running crazy boost on this car. I just try to take it easy, run it on stock boost. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I did regular maintenance stuff, like change the oil every 3,000 miles. Some will say, okay, if you're running synthetic, run, change it every 5,000, but I just change it every 3,000. Because I drive the car, but then I rarely drive the car because it sits in the garage, but then I drive it. So, it doesn't get like 10,000 miles a year. It gets probably 5,000 miles a year or less. Depends if I go on Bear Mountain or not. So, sorry. I saw a car just driving, but it, it went away. Um, so, yeah. Uh, whenever I go to Bear Mountain, it racks up you know, a good amount of miles, but maybe close to 5,000 a year. Let's just say that. Uh, when I first got the car, the car was really like neglected. I would say neglected as in the owner took care of it, but he left it out and he hasn't driven it for about, he told me, two years. So the car sat out, had dry rotted tires, the brakes were shot, uh, the accessory belts were squeaking all over the place. Uh, I think one of the headlights was out at that time. Uh, the bulbs on the taillights were, one of them will work and then the other side wouldn't work, the turn signal wouldn't work, the gauges in there were like shot, uh, I'm sorry if the camera's going off, I'm sorry, I'm trying to like look at the car instead of the camera, but I should be looking at the camera, uh, yeah, so the brakes were shot and then, um, there was just some bushings that were shot too that were replaced, uh, the interior wise, it was pretty good. It was very, very dirty, so I just try to clean that as best as I can. You know, I deep cleaned it and stuff like that, removed all the interior, just cleaned that up. Uh, I believe there was like a cat living in there or something, so that's why I was just like crazy. But I'm so glad I got this car. It, it just treated me so well, and since I started doing some stuff to it, making it look much prettier than what it was, it still looks kind of the same, you know. The side skirts are still the same, the front lip is still there, but everything else like I changed on the car. Uh, so it just looks much better and people always give me compliments and they, they always tell me the usual things like, you selling it, man? Hey man, how much you selling it for? I'll give you a thousand dollars in a, in a bag of Takis. And I'm like, come on, man, you should give me two bags of Takis. And they're like, sorry, pop, I don't have that much money. And I'm like, damn, how are you going to do me like that? It's a Ferrari for crying out loud. Nah, I'm just joking, but... I don't know, whenever you grow an attachment to a car, you just don't want to sell it at the time. You know, everyone says everything has a price. But I don't know, when you grow an emotional attachment, I, I guess, you know, a price doesn't really matter because it makes you feel good. I mean, of course, if there's a right price, I mean, you know, but as of right now, I really enjoy this car. And I had this for a very long time compared to all my other cars. And I don't think I'll ever sell it anytime soon, at least. But, um... Yeah, let me just get on with the modifications, uh, starting with the outside. Uh, let's just start with the front. So the front, 
is an arrow wear uh, front lip. And um, when I got the car, it wasn't painted. But then, uh, you know, I put some... I put some paint on there. It doesn't match the car that much, but it kind of does because it's black paint. I mean, and I I clear coated it. Uh, this lip scrapes a lot. Now you might think, oh, my car looks very low, but it actually has some pretty good cl ground clearance. But it's only when you're going like on a ramp. Uh, I can go over that easily, but if it's like on a kind of a steep ramp, the front lip does scrape. Uh, on the front, I guess you can see the red that's coming out. Those are hella horns. I don't know if I really like the look of them, but uh, it's just I don't have a factory horn. Uh, when I had the factory steering wheel on there, it never worked. So I tried to make it work, it never did. So I just said forget about it, and I just got some aftermarket horns that I'm still trying to wire up. I don't know what's going on with them. They did work, and then now they're not working. So I don't know what the heck's going on. My relay's good. My fuse is good. I don't know. So I might need new horns. I don't know what happened. Uh, another thing you might notice is the side markers. I got these tinted side markers from eBay. Oh, well, the sides are tinted, but then the fronts are not really tinted. They're just like black housings. And uh, on the front, you can see the badge. It's a Toyota Midship Runabout badge. Uh, my brother got me that for my birthday. And you can see the biggest uh, difference is the headlights. Uh, these were made by my buddy Armagon. Uh, he actually retrofitted these headlights. So he got an aftermarket headlight kit. Like he basically got aftermarket headlights and he opened them up and he modified some projectors to be in there. I think they're Miramoto projectors. And I'm using Miramoto uh, 5000K HIDs on there. So they work very, very nicely at nighttime compared to the stock ones. Sorry if there's noise. I mean, there's a this is like a construction no commercial area. I always come here to make videos. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, the car doesn't have fog lights because since it was an NA and I believe NAs in '91 didn't come with fog lights, so this one never came with fog lights. Nor did the owner put fog lights. Nor did I because I actually love it how it looks so clean. I don't really need fog lights because yeah, they look nice on some MR2s, but it's very rare coming across the MR2 what no fog lights and on top of that a hard top that would be ooh. uh my car is a t-top very very nice whenever it gets nice out like today today's was well, very hot today but now it's like 70 degrees very nice i talk too much i'm sorry but i'm just excited um the wheels these wheels are koenig hypergrams uh, i got these for the car because i think the car needed a new look it had the stock wheels i mean the stock 93 wheels uh, which look better than the 91s, but these are 17 by 8 plus 35 offset on the fronts, uh, 215, 40, 17s, and the rear is uh, 17 by 9 plus 15 offset, 235, 45, 17. So, yeah, they fit the car pretty nicely. Don't look at the curb, the curb rash is awful. Uh, yeah, so these are very awesome wheels. They're very light. I think they weigh the same as stock wheels. And, uh, the brakes are 92, uh, Toyota MR2 turbo brakes. Like I said, this was a nine, uh, this is an NA. So the NA came with smaller brakes. So the 92 turbo brakes are much larger and they're dual pistons in the front. And I think the rear is the same. I believe they're the same. Well, they're a little bit bigger on the rear. Uh, the shocks are uh, Bilstein shocks, and I think they're TNS Tech springs, uh, front and back. And uh, let's see, let's just keep on going around. The side skirts, uh, these are discontinued side skirts. They are called GRT side skirts. That's a G for Gabe, R for Reggie, and T for... Um, T for Taylor. GRT. I really like these side skirts because there's a duct for the brakes to cool off. And I don't I see the Gretty side skirts, but it's not as deep as these. And like I said, these are discontinued, so I haven't really seen any MR2s with this except one. And the guy was parting out his MR2 on Facebook. But other than that, I have not seen anybody else with these side skirts. Uh let's see what else. Like I said, the car was an NA, so it does have the turbo uh, engine lid 
which looks very nice. The NAs, there's our, there's our flat. This one's uh, protruding out. You can see the vents. Uh, if we go to the back here, um, the car has kooky taillights. I got these from Japan. Right now, the, pri the prices are skyrocketing. When I first got the car, I wish I would have got them. They are going for like $300 for the whole kit. Uh, now they're going for like $600 plus for the whole kit, which is ridiculous. But I guess supply and demand just really drives them up. Uh, let's see. As you can see in the rear, the rear has a Burke 3-inch uh, exhaust. Things come around. I guess that goes for the whole entire exterior. Yeah, that goes for the whole entire exterior. So we can start heading in to the interior. And I can start showing you guys something else. Something you might like. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Ooh. Ah. Mmm. Okay, so I got MR2 Heaven floor mats. The other side died it died because i was uh trying to drop off oil and the oil spilled inside the car but luckily it fell on the floor mat and nothing else but yes that's how it died rp floor mat uh down here uh these are the switches for the horns which looks kind of ratchet but hey it worked but not anymore and it's not the wires are loose it's something else i don't know what's going on with it um these have the leather door cards and these are notorious on the MR2s. Everyone has these problems with their elbows breaking it. But it has the leather door cards. Uh, as you can see, it has the cloth seats. So these are the leather door cards off of a turbo model. Um, I prefer the cloth seats because, you know, in the summertime, it doesn't burn your ass. And in the cold, it doesn't shiver your ass. Uh, over here, I had a stock MR2 wheel. But I got this wheel off of a Celica GTS. I love it. Feels really good. And on top, it looks better. I feel like it belongs in this interior. But some might say different. Uh, the stock wheel was a four spoke. I might post a picture or something to show you guys the four spoke. Uh, let me just sit into the car, I guess. All right. So over here I have an AEM uh, True Boost Gauge, so this is an electric, electronic boost controller. Uh, you get to change the boost settings on the fly, which is amazing. Uh, down here is my coolant temp. It's a Pro Sport coolant temp uh, gauge. Uh, over here is another Pro Sport gauge, but this one's for voltage. And this one is a glow shift gauge, that one's for oil pressure. But I'm still trying to fix the oil pressure gauge because it's, it doesn't read right, and I'll show you guys what I mean by it doesn't read right. I have a Pioneer head unit. I use a single dent so I can store my gum and, you know, I gotta stay fresh, you know what I'm saying? And my phone and all that in there. But I usually keep my phone inside the glove box because there's no point of using your phone in this car. It's just, you need all attention on this car. Uh, this car has a 93 plus shift shifter. Uh, it has a TRD shift knob, but the TRD went away, whatever. Uh, has a different shifter boot. Uh, this one was like effed up, so I got a brand new one from Toyota. Uh, this one was all cracked up too, so I got a brand new one from uh, someone online. Uh, let's see. Now, you see it says 140, so if someone were to see my car, they'll would, they would say, oh, that's a turbo MR2. Those who are, have a keen eye, they'll see that has an NA cluster. NA clusters have the RPM's going up to 8. The turbo models have it going up to 9. NA goes up to 140. Turbo goes up to 160. And NA has the volt uh, meter in the center. Turbos have this crappy turbo boost gauge on the center, which, like I said, is crappy, so it never works. Um, let's see what else. You know, i got to have my detailing products in there. And over here, I forgot to show this. So, um, in here, I have all the records from the previous owner. And I have all the records myself. I do everything, anything. So, when it comes down to buying anything for this car, if it comes down to even filling up gas, I keep everything. I don't know, I just love keeping records of this car. In, in any car in general, I keep records of. Every time I do an oil change, 
you can see down there oil changes every time I change the belts anything I write it all down keep it in order just in case you know for my own good and for the if there's going to be ever a new owner uh, so they can have a peace of mind like hey this guy actually took care of the car so you know that's good uh, these are pretty notorious too on this MR2 uh, the dashboard is lifting I didn't want to, you know, show that, but, you know, I don't want to be perfect now. But, uh, yeah, it is lifting. You know, it doesn't really look that bad. It looks wavy, but people do notice it from the outside. It looks terrible. Um, the windshield does have a crack. You see, I'm not perfect. I wanted to show these out to you. Uh, it does have a crack. I try to, you know, fill it in right here. It's okay. It didn't crack. It's just chipped. But, yes. Oh, let me show you the, the gauges. Let me just turn this on. All right. Ooh, it's red. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Nice. It looks beautiful. And you can look over here. Red. Ooh. I didn't know the radio was red. No, I actually didn't know. I'm stupid. And then, see, red, red. And you know what's the coolest part? Well, not cool, but like, you know, uh, when I'm driving... At nighttime, specifically, with the tops down, with the windows rolled down. Well, in general, I think, people just roll up. They don't roll up right next to me. They roll up a little bit back so they can just get a good view of the interior. Like, whoa, that kid has red lights. I want to be just like him when I grow up. They don't say that. But I just... Leave me alone. No, I'm actually stupid. I'm sorry. All right, let's turn this off and then let's go into the engine bay. I'm talking too much and this video is coming six hours long because of me. All right, so we're going to pop the hood. So those of you that don't know, this is the trunk. I'll pop that. I'll pop the frunk, which is over here. This little latch right here. Pop that. And then back here is a little, uh, it's the hood release right here. So... And then right here, I have the hood prop because it, it, it was never it was never attached in the first place. So, you know, a boy has to do what a boy has to do. All right. Oh, I better take that out. Close this. I'm going to open up the frunk first so you guys can see what's going on here. I'm going to put this hood prop down. All right. Now, you can see the car's not perfect. You can see there's, like, scratches all over the place. Yeah, so, go under here, I'm trying to prop the hood up, sorry, alright, so there's nothing special under here, uh, I have an ultra racing uh, front strut tower bar, I have, uh, this is the wiring going to uh, the horns, and you can see, this is my Miramoto, I think it's a relay, for the for the HID so they won't flicker and they stay very nice at nighttime. I just keep my toolbox in there, I keep some spare brake fluid, uh, some antifreeze. And yeah, it's always I mean it's pretty clean under here compared to like, you know, front engine cars. You see the brake master cylinder will be rusted out or the clutch master cylinder will be rusted out, but since this is like basically covered up it's just very nice under here but yeah it's not that much under here so I'm gonna go up to other places close this all right all right that's good all right come over here I'm just gonna go in the trunk you know we gotta save it good for the last which is the engine lid, but I'm going to open up the trunk first because, you know, you got to pop the trunk on these people sometimes. Okay, so, as you can see, it's turbo swap, so it has the 3SGTE, um, well, it says 3SGT because this is the JDM motor. Alright, so I just keep some more coolant back there. <laughs> it doesn't run out of coolant, I just keep it just in case, alright guys, so don't say oh, your car burns coolant, it doesn't, it's fine. Uh, with this power antenna, I didn't like how it always protruded all the way up. It's a factory antenna. These tend to really go bad, but I just unplugged mine. Mine does work, but I didn't like it. It looked like a little RC car, which it is still an RC car, but you know, 
I just unplugged it because every time I plugged in the radio, which is basically every time I turn on the car, the antenna will go up and I did not like that. So I just unplugged it so it can stay down. Yeah, these are some spare parts for some future stuff that I have to do to the car, like uh, coolant hoses for all types of stuff. Um, yeah, these are all gaskets, oil pump. I have an upgraded oil pump for the motor, just in case. Well, I'm going to do that the upgraded oil pump for when I do the timing belt on the car. So, yeah, that's that. Close that. I want to come over here so I can put the hood prop up. Put this up. Now, one thing I do want to mention, I do not have a water shield or a rain guard for the rear turbo lid. It never really affected me. I know people say, if you don't have it, your, tur your alternator is going to go bad. I mean, for two and a half years, I driven through monsoons i've driven through all types of stuff and the car's been fine knock on wood so as you guys can see down here this has uh ultra racing rear strut bar uh let's see it has a gen 2 it has an aftermarket intercooler piping kit it has a burke three inch side mount uh intercooler with the stock fan trust me i will upgrade the fan it's just there because i don't really take it out like on extremely extremely hot days because the car doesn't have ac i just take it on nice cool days like let's say 90 degrees and under i just take it out and i keep it on stock boost it's fine but when i took this car to autocross for the first time i saw that i really do need like an aftermarket uh fan for this car so i will look into that so don't worry um as you can see for those of you that have a k9 that knows mr2s this car is like very bare compared to the USDM models. USDM models will have uh, trash, no, not trash control, uh, cruise control. Uh, they'll have all this EVAP stuff all over the place. My car doesn't have that. So my car is just main thing basically, except the windows are power. I didn't want power windows. Uh, so let's see, it has the STI spark plug kit. Uh, it has a 3 inch Burke downpipe, it has a 3 inch Burke exhaust like I said, 4 inch Apexi intake, 4 inch Burke side, uh, side mount intercooler. Um, other than that it's basically, oh and it has a T CT20B turbocharger. So basically it's like your, not basic but like your basic full bolt-ons package i said not basic but it is basically your full bolt-ons package for an mr2 i'd say it's pushing 260 to the wheels i actually do want to dyno it i'm running like 11 pounds of boost it could go up to 17 pounds of boost easily which is like a freaking powerhouse but i don't really run it that much because it's just like putting a lot of abuse on the car which i did when i first bought the car i ran 17 pounds of boost all the time ran really good but i wanted to take it easy i know i'm sounding like a little puh but you know sometimes you gotta take your take care of your cars you know i don't want to always beat the crap out of it although on stock boost i do like romp on it because i know it's not going to be as stressful as 17 pounds all the time so yeah uh let's see what else um yeah i don't know what else to talk about for this but uh, yeah, that's where the EBC is at, electronic boost controller. And uh, it is getting pretty dark, but I wanted to record this when the sun was setting because it's nice and cool outside. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I mean, I really appreciate this car. And if anybody really wants to look into an MR2 Turbo or just an MR2 in general, I highly recommend it. It will really teach you how to drive a car a little bit on the edge. Like, especially take it out to autocross. Don't just start whipping around on, like, random public streets. Take it out to autocross. Because when I took it out to autocross, I thought I knew my car. Until I took it there. I I was literally on every, like, some corners, I was literally going sideways with this car. But I was able to control it. Because I'm not saying I'm, I'm a good driver, but, like, I feel like I am an experienced driver. Like, I've driven some cars. And this car really does take you up a notch. 
So if you guys really are looking into an MR2 Turbo, they are going up in prices because everyone and their grandmother is making a video of this car, including me. But I, I mean, when I got this car, it wasn't, it was becoming popular, but I didn't buy it because of its looks. Or, well, it does look beautiful, but I've always wanted another MR2. I've had an MR2 MK1 and AW11 uh, years ago. And that was beautiful. It was a 4 AGE. It wasn't the, the supercharged model. It was just the NA model. It was an 88. That thing was very nice. And I've always wanted another MR2. Until one of my buddies, Armagon, the one that made me the headlights, he got an NA MR2 SW20. And it just made me like relive my 4 AGE days. And I loved it. And I told myself, I said, I need to get this car. But I need to get a turbo model. I want to see what they're like. First test drive I drove it. I was like, whoa, this car is crazy nice because instant grip. Even though the tires are dry rotted to crap, you like launch it off the line. I didn't launch it, but like, you know, you get off the line, no slippage whatsoever. My goodness. It's like an all wheel drive car when it comes down to traction. I mean, you got to have good tires if you want to launch it, but I didn't really launch it. I just, you know, got on it. And wow, this thing was just amazing. You know, it's not the fastest car out there, but. You know, it just really hit the spot. And I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to listen to my heart because you're not supposed to do that when you want to get a car. So I walked away from it. And literally, like, I waited two weeks. And then I, you know, I placed my, uh, I told the guy, I said, look, I'll get it. I literally bought the car, like, 11.30 p.m. And I drove it home an hour and 30 minutes in a monsoon with dry rotted tires, with crap brakes, with the, with the alternator belt just squealing all over the place. Oh, that was the little street light that's just turned on, in case you're wondering where the light came from. Wow, well, it made the car look very nice. But yeah, that was my uh, story, and it was just wonder. Oh, there goes another light. Whoa, that's that looks very nice on video. Wow. I should have just waited. For the lights to come on. I didn't know it was going to be this nice. But yeah. That was my story. I know this video is kind of long. I will try my best to make it as short as possible. But you know this is my car. And I really want to share my experience with it. And my happiness to you guys. If you guys are ever looking for an MR2. What a lot of guys they tend to do. They tend to case swap it. By any means do what you feel like doing. Um. A lot of guys, they do two GR swaps or one MZ swaps, which is like the V6 motors for the MR... For for other Toyota cars, they swap it into the MR2s, which is amazing. But if you guys really want to try an MR2, try the NA first, and then move your way up to an MR2 Turbo. By any means, like when people stop me, I always, like if I have time, if I'm not going to school, if I'm not going to work, and I'm just driving around and people are just in, interested in the car, I'll tell them, hey, you want to go out for a test drive? And if they have a nice car or whatever, and I could see that they're a good driver, I'll say, hey, do you want to drive it? I'm not scared to let people drive my car. I'm not scared to give people a ride. I know people get very curious on what type of car it is because literally people don't know what it is. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say MR2 anywhere, but just in general, people don't know what it is. They think it's like some sort of unique car, which in my eyes it is. And I always get happy whenever people say, hey, man, nice car. or Hey, man, what car is it? You know, it always gets me excited to just talk to people. But other than that, I hope you guys really enjoy this video. I mean, I enjoyed being out here in this beautiful weather with my beautiful car. Just explaining all the mods to it. I know a lot of you guys, I know you guys weren't asking for it. But I know probably you guys were kind of curious as to, like, where is this MR2? Because I always made videos and the MR2 will be in the background or something. And I just think it's time for me to show basically my um channel's uh main car i guess you can say the mafia garage but i hope you guys enjoy this for once again and uh, i'll see you guys in the next one peace